Support for this podcast comes from the patrons at patreon.com slash FML FPL. Okay, welcome to another Fireside Chat. This is Alon. Today I'm joined by Baker, one half of the above average FPL pod. What's happening, my man? Very good, mate. That's good. It feels weird, like daylight, like being out and, and potting, like uh, not normally allowed out to the evening, but uh, <laughs> yeah. needs must, mate. Needs I must. I know, I know. Same here. I have woke up to multiple alarms. I'm like, yeah, we got to just get this fucking pod out there. This also doesn't feel like a normal fireside chat because we've been talking for years. I've been on your pod. You you know, we talk on Discord, whatever. This is just this is just a couple dudes hanging out talking FPL. Yeah, I think I think um over over the last sort of few seasons, I normally come and speak to you when it's like a, I think I'm about to do something stupid. <laughs> Can you tell me if I'm about to do something stupid? So yeah. for you to then ask me to come and talk to you when I might be doing something stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the beautiful thing about, you know, being in line with all of the content creators and all that stuff, which, you know, we're going to get to a lot in terms of the chips and the blanks and the doubles and whatever, is like, even if it seems stupid, at least everyone else is kind of doing it, which yes. it doesn't really work in real life, but in FPL, it kind of feels better. Yeah, and how are you with that? Because I think we all fall into different lines, don't we? Where it's like, some people see that lots of people are doing stuff and they're like, oh, I'm going to try and find a way to not do it. Some of them yeah. are like, well, everyone's doing it. I'm going to try and work out why. Like, what's your initial reaction when I was like, everyone's wildcarded, mate? Yeah, when you texted me this morning and it was literally the, one of the first things I saw this morning when I woke up was like, everyone I know is wildcarding. I was just like, what the fuck is happening? I was like, this is just some... I feel like I'm getting punked or something. Like, Ashton Kutcher's about to come out of my computer screen. He's like, oh, you burned your wild card, bro. But it's like, yeah, I just don't really see the full picture. And I think part of that has to do with maybe my team's a little bit different than everybody else's. You know, I've been on Matoma for like, eight game weeks, you know, a lot, I know a lot of people avoided him for the blank. I'm same on Stupignon. Like there's, there's just certain spots where I'm like, Oh, I've just held those guys because they're just good. And, but I don't know that that's a lot of why you're here is like diving into like, why is everyone, you know, wildcarding? Why are you wildcarding? What kind of team does it take where wildcarding now or next week makes more sense than what you know saving wild card till later in the season. Yeah, you know? and I think there is that for a lot of people. So yeah, I just you know, I just minus twelve last week to bring a lot of <laughs> Liverpool guys in, and we all did like hits to that. Yeah. So so there's different forms of like that sunk cost fallacy, isn't there? That you yes. you've got the side of. I've been prepping for this, mate. I got my Brighton boys in like yeah, to do this I'm so good. that I didn't need to do this. So now you're tilting me off here. I've gone, you know, to bring people in because I, I really liked some of the fixtures that were this week. And I, I kind of, I was under the impression I'd probably free hit 28. Right. Um, and then maybe wild card out of it, maybe even wild card 27. So uh, I definitely wasn't in this space. Right. Um, and I've probably gone through different stages of this one after the Tuesday night games, once Liverpool and Fulham didn't get a game. And I think I always knew that. I think I always knew that, that, that going heavy on Liverpool and most of us had, you know, at least one, you know, Andreas basically. Yeah. Like if that game dropped into 28, we suddenly knew 28 was really easy and you were like, I'm not going to wildcard here. Yeah, for sure. Then it doesn't drop in right. and there's it's not just that it doesn't drop in but then it then becomes future game weeks become easier too and that's right. that's the thing on this one is when we start looking further forward so i'll, I'll take you probably to the end and then come backwards <laughs> on this a little bit the journey is what's happened this week has made future game weeks easier okay that's one of the things that accelerates it right um then obviously you've got last night tottenham gets a game kane gets 
game yeah. in 28 against Southampton. Yeah. He gets Forest in 27. NFO, as you boys like to say. I've now <laughs> found myself saying NFO, which feels so weird. <laughs> Whenever so I listen awful. to you guys or like The Wire and I hear NFO and Necktie and Brent Ham, I'm like, I love it. <laughs> we're ruining, we're ruining the country. <laughs> Genuinely are. <laughs> um, yeah, so then because things have become easier, you're thinking, oh, maybe I can attack some more. Maybe I can attack some more. And then you start working through what do you need to attack? Because if you're going to not free hit in 28, yeah. and let's just let's just go there. I'm going so to throw up the fixtures just so we have it, just yeah. for reference, yeah. So, like, biggest blank of the season, 28, yeah. is now Man City, Liverpool, Man United, West Ham, Brighton, Fulham. Right. So it doesn't feel like a free hit time. But it is awkward because in your non wildcard team, as much as you've prepared and you've got yourself in some um, Brighton boys, you've yeah. got uh, you've I think got three eight Liverpool. blankers right now. You got eight blankers. And, yeah. You know, now, I have transfers to use, obviously. But how many am I really going to use? You know, I'll probably still have at least five blankers if I don't yeah. wildcard. Yeah. And if you free hit it in twenty eight. You've got real no opportunity to attack 27 or 29 either. Because as soon as you free hit in 28, you've definitely only got one transfer in 29. And you're going to be stuck with some of these guys. You're not going to want Andreas. You're not going to want the free Liverpool. You're not going to want Taco now. It's not like all oh, Taco plays 28. Like, yeah. Yeah. Those days are done. Um, and you've got keeper issues. Yeah, but wouldn't <laughs> I... So from my perspective, I, I totally hear yeah. what you're saying, but the way that I sort of planned it out last week when also I was taking a minus save for three Liverpool players was sort of, okay, if Liverpool play in 28, I'm not going to free hit. If they blank in 28, I am going to free hit. And yeah. free hit just means I can use transfers this week, next week, and in 29 to prep for 29. You can Isn't do. that what that means? Yeah, I mean, it is. It is, yeah. but if you if you now look to the to the right on this this chart we're looking at here, but look at thirty to thirty eight onwards. Yeah, I'm not sure what that all means to be honest. It just means there's not really big issues. Let me try and explain it in a in a bit more. So thirty two now is the next blank. So people were worried about two blanks. So worried about twenty eight. Worried about yep. thirty two. So thirty two now. So that's likely, the next round yeah. of FA Cup or something like that. Yeah. So the yeah. likely blank is Brighton against Man City because both Brighton and Man City are still in the FA Cup and they play each other in 32. Gotcha. So nice, neat, in a bow, ties up, says thanks very much. That's yep. coming out. Then it, uh, Fulham have Man United in the FA Cup, which means either Man United and Chelsea, which sits in the or... Yeah. Fulham and Leeds. Right. Drops out of FA2. Now imagine if that's Fulham and Leeds. You've then only got Fulham, Leeds, Brighton, and uh, Man City that are not playing in FA2. So it just basically doesn't matter at all. It's a, no it's a normal game week. Yeah. It's just a normal game week. Yeah. It's a normal game week. Um, so we've then got some doubles. So we've got some Brighton doubles. Yeah, they um, still which are two, you know, Brighton have got to play Man doubles. City, Brighton got to play Man United, Brighton a couple play Newcastle. Yeah. 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 And assuming that Brighton Man City one doesn't go ahead as well, that's going to create another double. So that'll be yeah. a third double. Yeah. So they're going to have to try and slot some doubles. So they're almost certainly going to double in 34, double in 37. Um, and the other one, loads of people have got different ideas. There's a good chance they might double between 30, 31. Some people think that they were there. Some people say the 35 or 36. Just that Newcastle one needs to drop in somewhere. But yep. they'll almost certainly drop, have doubles in 34 and 37. Good doubles yep. too. So if you sort your Brighton out now, whether that be 26, whether it be 27, you're pretty much going to keep them. Yeah, you're just, they're, they're season long holds, I think. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And they're cheap, but, right? So it's 30, not like you're breaking your yeah. team to own these guys. Yeah. Yeah, and then you make a decision of because they don't play in 32 and because Man City don't play in 32, you could free hit in 30, 32. 
Well, you could save it and then attack one of those two doubles that's left, the 34 or 37. Yeah, I was wondering um, what people who are wild carding now were thinking with the free hit. Because if you're wild carding this week or next week, you're probably not free hitting in 28, right? And that means you're saving your free hit for either the other blank or you're saving yeah. it for, you know, a big double or something like that. Yeah. That's what people but are thinking. Definitely. And if you look at the top of this chart on here, um, game week 32 is 22nd of April. Game week 33 is a midweek game week. Yeah. And so then you go into game week 34, which is a double game week following a midweek. It could be rotation madness. Right. But that's a good week then to free hit because you'll be able to because... know what's just happened. Yeah, it's like you look at that and you're like, that could be rotation madness, could be a nightmare. And you look at between 28 and 29 and you're like, oh, there's plenty of time, but there's a fucking international break. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> Have yeah, fun so, with that. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's all the fit. But the, the real principle is you haven't got to be that worried about it because you get transfers every week. Yeah. So, so, so post 30, you don't have to. So then what people then start doing is, right, I'm going to what. The obvious one now is bench boost in 29. The obvious move of anything that people are looking at is they're saying bench boost in 29 looks great because yeah. everyone doubles. Yeah, right. So it's, it's the then, easiest to set up for. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you've got some teams in there now because um, Brent, Brentford have <laughs> dropped in there. and <laughs> so Brent, I am because I'm with you. Brent, uh, Brent. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, because Brent... Brentford have got the game in 28, like that, that just makes 28 so much easier because you can go big on them in 27, you've got them in 29. Albeit, I think some people might even take them, some of those guys out in 29 if, if, if they've got the luxury transfers. Yeah, um, the 29 double is really bad for Brentford. I, I think that people are just seeing two doubles and being blind to that, but it's like away Brighton, away Man United. Like that, yeah. they, everyone could just get one to zero points for Brentford. The Taco effect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but, that, so like, I mean, not to cut you off, but that that this is all touching on like part of why I just don't really get it that much because if you're wild carding with the plan of not free hitting, that means you're limiting your number of blankers, which yeah. means like between City, Liverpool, Man United, Brighton who are really the teams of the blankers that we would own players from. You're not having like more than three or four plus the keeper. Mm -hmm. And that means you're also stacking, you know, and this was sort of like Jeff's question is like, you're, you're stack, you're building the building blocks of your wild card are Brentford and Brighton who mm -hmm. are like good, but they're not like a consistent top team that we can like bank and rely rely on and they have all these guys who are just incredible and like whatever and then you're also you know filling out the rest of your team with like Leicester players and like Chelsea players and like guys that when you look at further than just game week 29 you just don't want in your team like you probably just don't want any of those guys in your team I and think a lot of people yeah. are seeing that I think yeah. that I is seeing that. You know, when I, okay. when I first said it, you were like, ah, oh, it's all about Brighton and Brentford. Yeah. I think Brighton is really important. One, yeah. they have a good team, so that's yeah. not an issue. It's not right. an issue at all. We're going to want them all season. Um, getting on free, even if you don't get the right free and you end up having to switch one to the other, but you could, almost all of us are going to have free now from now yeah. to the end of the season. Totally. We, we might, might switch down to two and then get back up to three, but... We're all going to have two or more from here yeah. on in. So making that happen as an accelerant is a, is a good idea. Um, so for you personally, who's got to, yep. that, that's not a driver for you. But for anyone right. that doesn't, that's your first accelerant. Uh, I'm putting a lot on this fire and I'm, I'm, I'm burning it down and getting yeah, those chips and that, out. And I want to just throw in the fact that their, their two doubles are actually good. Yeah. Like the 27 doubles at Leeds home palace. Great. And then game of 29 yeah. home Brenham at Bournemouth. Great. So like, right. as opposed to Brentford, like you can really feel very good about starting all your Brighton assets in both double game weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So good. 
So if you yeah. haven't got any, that's that's almost tick one. So yeah, just just do it. So you don't pass that test. You're okay. Yeah. Um, Oof, dodge one bullet. Uh, let's go. <laughs> you've dodged a bullet so far. Then um, if we start working through, so th- the Brent Am stuff is basically it's how much you want to go with it. Like Tony, yeah, that's scary. Yeah. Yeah. To- Tony, I think is just it's a good pick. Isn't Tony it? You know, should Tony be in every pick. team. I think straight it's, up every team. That's it. Yeah. So then almost add him to the Brighton players. Almost like say he plays yeah. with Brighton and can have four. Yeah. Um, the keepers, I mean, there's a lot of choice on keepers. The defenders, there's a lot of choice on defenders. If people only want to go for two of them, one of them even, yeah. fine. I probably will just, because I'm just a whore for the doubles, is <laughs> I probably will end up with tripping up on, on both of them. I know what you're going to have. You're going to have Tony, Raya, and Ben Me. You know, you know that's what I want to do. <laughs> you know, you know, I want to get, I want to get fun and do something off of me. But we know yeah. I'm not in this world. Yeah. Um, but I, I suspect so. I suspect right. I think Ryan's a good price. You know. Yeah, Ryan's great price, bones, great player. Yeah, does the business, gets the yep. saves, does the saves, things. bonus, etc. There's a few things out there interesting. They tend to when they're away against better teams play wing backs. So maybe Rico Henry is an option. But I'm not wedded on that. People are looking at Pinnock against me. Trying to compare defenders on like XG and stuff, I, I don't really get it because because it just takes one big chance and it makes such a big swing on so many things. Right. There's so little exactly. variables. I, exactly. I'd pro- prefer to just watch a game and look at where they aim in the corners at if you're looking for especially, dominance. You know. Especially when the difference between Pinnock and Ben Me is 0. 0.02. And they're yeah. combined next year. And it's like, dude, that what are we fucking talking about here? That's yeah, that's yeah. one header swings that to Ben Me is now ahead of him. But yeah, but I, do I like definitely Rico will Henry. look at it. I definitely yeah. will still look at it and go, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that's the reason. Because occasionally yeah, yeah, it sure. works. It's like I got it on Webster last season and he scores, and I was like, yes, that was me. I that did was that. Me. Yeah, 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 yeah. The research <laughs> paid off. And when he doesn't yeah. score, you're like, XG's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, exactly. people are probably gonna get like Norgard. Like he's just nah. They, I don't think I don't think they're because midfield's okay. just too tight. Yeah, because everyone's know, got Rash. Everyone's gonna have Rashford. It's yep. got Rashford. So that's your Rashford. that's one blanker. Yeah, one blanker that everyone's, everyone's gonna, gonna have, have. Everyone's got or or will have Saka, won't they? Yeah, that's just that's a done. Everyone's gonna probably want two Brighton midfielders. Yep, and they just got to work through which two it is. Man, it sucks. They don't have a forward. Man, it sucks. Oh my god! If they just had a f- good forward option that we could just go like Tony what? Brighton striker Holland or something, it would just be so yeah. easy. Yeah. And look, I'm not going to tell you which of the midfielders I think I should go because one is I don't know. I don't feel prepped enough on Brighton midfielders. I'm going to try and work my way through it over the next two days. But there's there's loads of people out there for that stuff. Yeah. Um, but but you're probably going to have two midfielders, and you, then you only got one spot, and I think that other spot. Either goes Arsenal midfielder for most people. So they either just, you know, I've got Odegaard now, I stick it. You look at Marty, yeah. Yeah. You see what he's doing. Um, at, let, let me ask you that question though, because I do trust your judgment on that. If you were picking for, if you were picking for this weekend, Odegaard or Martinelli? Martinelli. Yeah, for, for this week, for how they're playing right now. Yeah, I would pick Martinelli. I mean, Inketia is really good at a lot of things, but one thing that he's not good at is like doing that Jesus thing of like, I'm going to peel to the left and make yeah. space for Martinelli. And, you know, his build up play is, is okay, but it's not, it's not like Trossard, who's obviously just not a forward and is way more comfortable on the ball and stuff. And I think what we've seen in the double is more early season Martinelli where he's like allowed to come inside. He's getting huge chances. He's taking tons of shots. He's playing really well. And I think Trossard's a big part of that. So yeah, for, for home Bournemouth, I mean, I have Nketi in my team and I'm just like, well, he's probably not going to start again, you know, after what they have been doing. So yeah, I think it was kind of limped off at the end as well. If you saw that, but kind of limped off. I mentioned it. They'll look at it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Not looking good, but um, 
then he starts immediately talking about the relationship between Trossard and Martinelli, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Brutal. <laughs> brutal. Brutal. Um, of course, of course, Eddie will start and, and bang, you know, that's just well, the way it is. That's lore, yeah. Um, so it's one of those two, yeah. or probably Maddo is, 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 is right. the other option, because Maddo, right. uh, the, the thing with whoever you pick, you're almost certainly benching one one of the two Arsenal midfielders or this third or this other person that is, if it's Maddo, in 27. Which That's is also tough. crazy. Tough. Arsenal I mean, the bench in Fulham. 27. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think there's some that are looking at maybe the bench boost in 27. So, yeah, why not? So, so that, that could also be like... I, I think they'll see how 26 plays out and then work it out from there because that's one of the things, isn't it? You wild card, you get the bench boost straight after, blah, blah, blah. The bench will be great. The bench will be great. Yeah, so. I mean, honestly, when you, you're talking that way, like if I were to wild card in 26, which I think is very unlikely with the deadline being, you know, 36 yeah. hours away or whatever, but I think that that's probably more how I would set up. Because you just get it out of the way. You know, bench boost is only plus four guys. It's really easy to have just four additional doublers on your bench who are cheap and good. And then you don't set your team up with like double Leicester, double Villa, you know, moving forward for the rest of the season. You you can just have an 11 who double in 29. You don't need 15. I don't know. Some definitely something to look at there. On, on that basis of uh, doing 26 v 27, I think, you know, based on what you, when you look at, like, if you put your wild card team, everyone's got to do this, put your wild card team in that you would do for 26 and then match it up against your own team and look at it and go, what do I think the differences and points there? I did that, looked at that for, I feel like there's probably 10 points on my side. So let me, wild card I think if week. I press this, yeah. So this is your team last game it's week. my pain. This is my pain. <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, just, 83 just, is not terrible. Your rank's not terrible either. So I'm you're, minus you're 12, fine. mate. I'm minus 12, mate. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, minus yeah. 12, I'm minus 12, yeah. minus 12. I took out, I took out Ward, uh, White and brought in Enketia for a hit. Oh. That's good deals. Uh, <laughs> that's good deals. Yeah, that's that's the kicker, mate. Like uh, that's, that's really like a, brutal. It's like a 10, 11 point swing at that one. Right at the last oh, minute man. as well. Five minutes before deadline. Yeah. Oh, well, man. Well, maybe White will get... get uh, it's mine for. It it's mine. I looked around some. No, mate. I looked. To be honest, I'll be honest. I looked around at some prediction sites. There's a very popular predictor thing that gets about twenty odd people to predict their team, and they predicted only six of them predicted that White started both games in the double, and twenty three of the twenty four predicted that Enketia would. And I was like, Yeah, it's worth it here. I like it. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't. I can't fault that. Hindsight is twenty twenty. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. no one with a brain would have said, "Inketi is not an amazing pick this week." Before yeah. game week twenty five, I mean, yeah. I was on him. LR is on him. Tons of people who are good managers are on him. That's a, just a great pick, and he just it's just a brutal. That was a brutal. Thirty eight total minutes. Yeah, brutal. That was a brutal one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, <clears> um, but yeah, if you take those three off the well, even do you want to take? Trippier off the bench and play him against City is, is the next thing. But if I looked at that, I think somewhere, let's just say, because variance happens and how it works, five to 10 points difference like that I end up with of, of where I am. Um, then the fact that you gain a transfer. So I kind of almost add like four points onto it. So I, I figure something like I gain about 10 what, points out. What do you mean gain a next. transfer? Because if I do it now... Do the wild card in 26. 26 as opposed to 27. I'm gaining that transfer that I can then use across 27, 28, 29. Because we're going to need transfers. To navigate a blank, to get the bench boost in order, I want to get me an extra transfer in the bag. I mean, I guess. I don't really understand that logic. right? Like, so you're if never, you wild card you're never in 26, gonna use, you get Yeah, you're one, never going to use a transfer in 27, though, are you? Because like we've already talked about, you'd have people like Odegaard or have Martinelli you played FPL before? What are you talking you, about? Honestly, Dude, nothing the, the is only... ever going to happen that's going to sway my yeah. opinion or you know change my mind. That's crazy. What are you talking about? Like, I feel like the Obvious. extra information, like getting a week closer to the blank and to the to yeah. the double, 
it saves you a transfer by like wildcarding closer to it. You know what I mean? And that's the offset. That's what I'm saying is yeah, I feel yeah. like I got it there. But what you might say is if you feel like your team looks okay for this week, yeah, you want information and you want to go 27. I don't think there's, I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad. Mm. I think the other thing is you look at your appetite of where you want to go. I think in 27, it's a little easier if you wanted to go against Harland. For cap, you mean? No. Or just in your team in general? In your team in general. So 27 cities at Palace. At Palace. Then Holland blanks, and then he has home Liverpool. So I get that. 28, yeah. 29, not good. Yeah. It, it's and then weird you need to say back. not good with Liverpool. You need, you need him back. You need him back. <laughs> you absolutely yeah. need him back. But I think you, you can do it. You can do it. What's if the you logic wanted. for saying that at Palace is the time to get rid, though? That seems it's more, really risky. It's more that the players, you've already got benching headaches in 27. Everyone's got, ben, everyone who wildcards is going to yeah. have to face up to the fact that For sure. their 27 week is going to be horrid, 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 horrid. You know, I, I, I looked at it and it was going to be something like um, Odegaard. Let, let's just say it was my team or this one. Something like Odegaard and Martinelli, uh, a Gabriel or Zinchenko, and maybe like a Botman or a James or something like that. Yeah. Be on my bench. That's hard. Brutal. <laughs> like benching Brutal. those type of players. Yeah. So you're already in that space of where you've got people. So so it, having, say, Haaland, let's just say <laughs> you oh didn't have Haaland. You're getting really and, and in, crazy right and in, now. <laughs> and instead you had someone like Ollie Watkins. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? <laughs> Are you trolling me? This is insane, dude. <laughs> Let's just say you had someone like Let's Ollie just Watkins. say that last time they played Holland got a hat trick in 20 minutes because Palace are really bad. Let's, Let's just, just say, say. Let's just say that even Tottenham scored four against Crystal Palace. Let's, Let's just, just say. say. <laughs> Let's I, just say. I, that that seems way too crazy for me. If you want to use a free in twenty eight to go yeah. Holland to someone who plays and then doubles yeah. in twenty nine, that makes sense to me. Like yeah, if you yeah. went Holland to like Felix in twenty eight, who's home Everton in twenty eight, and then his home Villa, home Liverpool in twenty nine, and you then go. back to Holland, like that sounds good. But in 27, uh, hell no. So if you like it, you can do that. You can go Haaland now in 26. You can have Haaland in 27. Yes. You want Haaland You go Felix in 28. Yeah. You get Felix in the double, and then you go back to Haaland. Yeah. But in order to do it, and also to not take hits, you need some transfers in the bag, which there's there's wildcard in 26. Oh my god! Because then you've got your little save in twenty seven, and then you've yeah, got but it if there. Wild card in twenty seven, then you just use your one free transfer on that move that you already know. But then, it you are definitely going to have less players in twenty twenty eight. Like if you did it wild card in twenty seven, like I would, I would bring Bruno in because I'd want Bruno in twenty nine. Like we're all going to want Bruno in twenty nine. Uh, yeah, I want Bruno for at Liverpool. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I we, should we, switch we, back to this, maybe. Yeah. So you could do that. Like you could just go, I'll do Bruno in now on wildcard because you got wild cards to do it, really. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get Bruno now. You get Bruno Southampton. You just take the ride that he doesn't doesn't play in the blank and have him for the double. Dude, I'm getting so confused. I, I, so, what I'm saying is, these aren't. It's not really about Brighton and Brentford. It's about players that you want from Arsenal, the right players. It's about players that you want from Man United, the right players. Yeah, we've got Maddo, Nacho, all those guys. We've got Newcastle defense. Yeah. Like, look at Newcastle. Like, they're going to play a double. They might end up. They might end up doing. Man, they might end up with Wolves in 27. Forest in 28, double Man, yeah, Man United at home, West Ham away. Wait, who's this and again? Then, Start over? This is Newcastle. Oh, Newcastle. So yeah, Newcastle, Newcastle defence. Yeah. But defensely, yeah, like defensively defence at home shot. to Wolves, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. Forest. 
yeah. then a double, then potentially yeah. a double against Brentford yeah. and, and Brighton. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so Trips people that taking... or something like that, or Pope maybe. Yeah. 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 They're all good. They're not just bad team. And Ollie. Don't forget Ollie, mate. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I like Ollie. I, I really do, but I'm not looking at him to be like, that's what's pushing me over the edge to wild card. I mean, the, yeah, so CB's question was like, what's the threshold for hitting the big red wild card button? I have zero Brighton, zero Brentham. Is that an auto push? Yes. And you're saying that like Brighton and Brentford aren't really the motivating factors to wildcarding, but in no, this I think case, Brighton I think is. they are. Yeah. Yeah, I think Brighton is. And and, and Tony, like I say, let's yeah, pretend yeah. Tony plays for them. So there's yeah. four players. Like you yeah. can't get there. Because also, don't you want Kane home to Forest away to Southampton when it's yeah. a blank? You do. You do. I mean, so, I, and, it pains and you me want to Bruno. say it, but you do. Yeah. So you want Kane, you want Bruno, you want the right Arsenal free that you want. You want four players minimum from those two. You maybe want double Newcastle defence. Before you want Felix. You don't want Ollie Watkins. You want do you want Rhys James? Home to Leeds? Yeah. Home I to mean, Everton it, in twenty eight. No, I don't. I don't want Rhys James in any situation, but I, I hear you. I hear the words that you are coming out of your mouth. <clears throat> you're you're like talking the, me into it a little bit. I'm I'm. The, you're talking me into it, but I'm not. I wouldn't be doing. I don't think what everyone else is doing. Like when I look, I'm just staring at this chart. Probably too much. I'm going cross eyed a little bit, but I look at this and I'm like, okay, Man United at home, Southampton into the double, into Everton, into Forest. Like that's triple Man United for me. If I was yeah. wildcarding in 27, that's Bruno Rashaw, no question. Done. Done. Absolutely done. I, I'm looking at Liverpool. I'm like, maybe, because they still have Bournemouth in 27, you know, and like maybe that's a one player or something like that. Because even though it's a bad double in 29, it's still a double. Mm. I'm looking at, yeah, there's Kane there. Basically, what I'm saying is I'm looking at this chart and I'm saying if I was going to wild card now or in 27, I think I would still have like seven blankers. So, and I think that is the thing about wildcard in 27. I think you will end up with more blankers. I think that is the thing. I would end up with more blankers, but I think I would end up with the better team. That's kind of what I'm trying to say after 29. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a matter of weighing, is it worth saving your free hit for the worst team? And I don't think it is. I just this is just riffing off the top of my head. I don't have like a solver in front of me, you know. It's yeah. just what I think. But like, where you have to think like, okay, just imagine your game week thirty wild card team, and like, I think having a lot of blankers is a lot closer to that team than being able to not use your free hit in twenty eight because you have a lot of people playing in twenty eight, right? So in thirty, you're gonna want. Holland and maybe another city. You're, we're all probably still going to be tripled up on Arsenal, if not two. You're probably still going to want Kane. You're definitely going to want Triple Man United. You're definitely going to want Triple Brighton. You're probably on, you know, some of them overlap. Like, you know, maybe Brentham's still okay, Newcastle's still okay, whatever. But that's just like a lot of blankers. So I, I still... Is free hit that valuable later in the season when you told me at the beginning of this pod that like, yeah, well, it's easy. It, the season is now easier to navigate. I, st- I don't really know if free hit is worth holding on to anymore, even, even if you're burning your wild card. Yeah, I, th- I think it's, I think that's either beholder, man, like what, 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 where you want to be with it. I do still think bench boost in one of 27 or 29 is a yeah. really strong play. Looks and good. You, obviously, yeah. the only way you can have the ability to do either of those and that make that decision as it comes into it is if you've already wildcarded this week. Because you yeah, can't this wildcard week or next and, week. And, and player. But you can't, well, you can't bench boost in 27 if you wildcard in right. 27. If you, if you wildcard in 27, you're bench boosting in 29. Yeah. Like, almost 100%. Yeah. But you are then definitely going to probably hurt yourself over the... You, you probably almost... I think if you're going to do 27, then you might start to make decisions about 
going less Arsenal on that one. Yeah, which is yeah, because most people that most people that are wild card in twenty six are going triple triple Arsenal. Which I totally agree with there. Home Bournemouth, at Fulham, home Palace, home Leeds is their 26 yeah. through 29. Yeah. Then that. it gets dicey in game week 30. They're at Liverpool, at West Ham, home Southampton's a banger, obviously. Mm. At Man City, home Chelsea, at Newcastle, home Brighton. I mean, that and, is just a terrible run. Yeah, and most people that are doing it in 26 uh, are likely to have are likely to move to, say, say they have one of the defenders, and that's a deliberation. I think Gabriel or Zinchenko. Or Zinchenko. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, whichever you fancy for, for this week in 28. But I think a lot of people have almost penciled in that they'll go, say, the common one is Odegaard and Gabriel go to Bruno and Shaw in 29. In 29. So they'll go without yeah, those, makes sense. those Man United ones for the Southampton game and the Liverpool makes game. Makes sense. And then, just, and then just go straight into those two. Um, but man, it's hard to get rid of Arsenal players when they're home leads. <laughs> so hard, I mate. think part of what's happening here a little bit, and this always happens in FPL, and you know, I'm definitely a victim to it all every, every fucking week of my life, is we just still don't think of Arsenal as they're maybe the best team in the league. And part of that has to do with the fact that they haven't been since like 2004. And the other part of it is that their players are like 8 million and not 11 million. But if this was Liverpool and their pomp and they were home leads in a double, we wouldn't be like, let's get rid of Mo and Mane for two doublers. We would just be like, no, that's really stupid. They're probably both going to double digit haul. So I, yeah. I question those moves. <laughs> I think we're also fickle on Arsenal because they're easy movable because the price is. Whereas if you like went, went Mane and Salah, then you'd put so much money into it that it almost like you couldn't really see the right. I'm going 12 million to, te- to 5 million type players and right. the likes of it, whereas they feel interchangeable. I think one of the things on Arsenal is there's still a lot of route to points, that, which is good. Still they're a lot all of good. That there's a lot of route to points. So you're like, you're never quite sure if they win 2-0 you're never really sure who's going to get the bonus. You're never really sure which those two goals are coming yeah. from. There's always yeah. a chance that it, that it could so be Maybe Mo and Mane is a bad comp, but maybe it's like, mm. are we going to get rid of you know, Foden when he was playing every week? Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's like mm, that. It's, obviously it's like, not, because home leads might be 5-0. It really might be. <laughs> it's, it's like if City midfielders were predictable who would play. That's what we've got with Arsenal. Yeah, and that just... <laughs> That just seems really bad to me. Like, if in a world yeah. you imagine City are home leads in 29, and we knew for a fact that Mares and Foden were going to play, <laughs> yeah. I would definitely not be like, all right, I'm going to hit out Mares and Foden for two men, you know, or for two yeah. any players in the game. I also you think know? if you hit, you do take players out from Arsenal in 29, you probably are then free hitting in 32 because the home Southampton game is going to. Do you in? Yeah, right. And that's that's the good part is you could get them in now. You get them out in twenty nine. Then realistically, you only have them back in for thirty two. Either side of that, the Liverpool and West Ham and City games away, and the Newcastle yeah, game I mean, their away. Their fixtures are awful, awful. So actually, you can really have that. Good. I'm going to have these next three games, which is fantastic for me start moving them out in 29 despite the fact that it's a little bit early but i'm doing it for doublers good doublers as well sure you know taking yeah, them really out for sure and, yeah and bruno is fantastic um so it works it works but i would rather the best get way, rid best of way to- bad doublers than get rid of arsenal players yeah uh, absolutely i can yeah. see myself thinking that when it comes around to 29 who would i want to get rid of Zinchenko home to Leeds or Ben Me with yeah. Brighton like, and Man United. To me, that's away. not close. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think I think we'll all come around to that by then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think so too. That's why I said a little bit on the Brent Brentham one is I don't think you should just wedge yourself in that it's gonna be I'm gonna do three and three. I think we've got to work yeah. that out over the next couple of days. Keepers I don't mind because let's be whatever. honest, past this whatever. Yeah. 
Kieran, the defenders. Cares? But they yeah. look like good save point games. So you just think if they get one clean out of those four games, Raya's going to get one 10 pointer. Yes. Right. And if they, even in some of the, the harder games, well, none of them are really that hard, but he's always capable if they, for some reason, concede two of still making seven saves and getting a bonus mm. or something like that. Um, um, the info. While we were doing this, you mentioned the word solver. I just ran your team through the old FP, FPL okay. review solver. What did it say? Tell me, what did it, give me it's, the it's scoop. On, on, on doing let me, a let wild me pull card up my in, team. Let me pull up my yeah. team. Yeah. On doing a wild card in 26 versus doing a wild card in 27 for you. Yeah. There was only an estimated four, point, four points in saving between now and game week 30. That's not a lot. Sorry, say that again. So there's a four so, point so, increase so it, yeah. of wildcarding this week as opposed to next week. Yeah, for you. Okay. And then, That's like, correct like me if I'm me. wrong. I'm not. You know, I don't write this kind of code. I don't even use this kind of software. But wildcarding earlier will always show it like an EV gain in these kind of systems, right? It's actually not much different, but the biggest place where it gains is as you've pulled out is the 28 is that it's it's much easier to navigate 28 going in 26 because then you roll in 27 and then you've got a transfer you can use in 28 um if you go in 27 it's it it's harder to get more than about eight players out in, in what about i'm what i'm most curious about is wild carding this or next week and still using free hit and still using free here. You want me to do because this? That, and then bench boosting as well. You're just going to go yeah, full just house. Use, just I mean, this the is, chips. This is the time to use them, right? I mean, this is the biggest blank of the season, the biggest double of the season, the biggest pile up of the season. You know, right? So I that that's what I, I think that's what I'm stuck on almost more than anything. I kind of get teams wild carding out of, you know, you have some disasters, you have no Brighton, you know, whatever it is. I kind of get that now. I think you've talked me into that, but I still don't really get not using your free hit in 28. Like I can't really imagine a team where I'm like, that's a good team and you don't have to use your free hit. Like both of those seem really hard for me to get because I want triple man United. I want triple Brighton. That's six blankers already. You know, you can get rid of Holland. Sure. You know, you you could have zero Liverpool. Sure. I'm not sure that these are like optimal, but I can see it. But I'm already on six blankers. Yeah. You know, and so. Yeah, I don't know. Is that is that good? <laughs> I think it's the thing is, it's like, like, is that what you're so, planning? I'm just running out eight that week or something. Eight or nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Maybe okay. ten if I get fans. Listen, the main way to get to ten is to take Harlan that at 28. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's that's going to be the main way to it. And it's like, how much does I your think that's fine. So, so, yeah. so that's where you need to go. Yeah, I um, think that's fine. I don't, I don't really give a shit about like losing value on him. I don't think it really matters at this point in the season. You know, losing whatever cost. Gain on, um, gain on playing the free hit in uh, 28. Yeah. Gain. Okay gains you eight points on what you would have if you just wildcard in 27. Weird. I don't so, know how these so, things work. That's so you're so effectively weird. just saying a free hit is only worth eight points because it's, it's three extra players. That I mean, probably not that great. It, yeah. 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 It depends how hard you want to lean on the other blankers, right? Because yeah. if we're putting three Brighton, three men United aside, it's like, do you want more than just Holland or do you even want Holland period? Do you want any Liverpool players is a big question. I think for a lot of people, yeah, yeah, yeah. do you want any West Ham players? I mean, West Ham are at Brighton this week, home Villa blank home, Southampton home, Newcastle at Fulham. And I, I know, know they've been dog shit all year, in. but they're, they are not that bad. Yeah. Fabianski's, so, Done yeah. his cheap burn or something, isn't he? So yeah, so, Ariola is cheap. He's better, four point three. Yeah, Other he's cheap. Than that, like, where'd you go with West Ham? Well, I mean, it'd be the Ings? obvious guys. I mean, it'd be like a 
take a punt on Bowen or something, right? Or take a punt on Ings or something, right? I think, I think Ings is easy. I think the midfielders, mate, they're so like I say, come back. Yeah, there's to, so many. Two Brighton, Saka, Rashford. Yeah, there's so many. Like, like you're already but, there. I know. You just Bowen's been really like looking good, putting up huge numbers recently. You know, obviously Ings came in with the brace. I don't think that that's like a 100% ignore. No, um, no, no. But it's, yeah, I got a lot to think it? about. You're fucking my head up because <laughs> I mean that I think a lot of the reason also people are, are happy to wildcard out is I think people are very happy to get rid of their three Liverpool with home man United. Oh yeah. 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 I, I and obviously that's that not a that. good fixture by any stretch, but I think you caused that to be fair, mate. Like, like I listened to the pod last week and yeah. I was quite happy about Liverpool against man United. Then I heard it and it was like, Bruno's going to steamroll over this midfield. And I yeah. was like, whoa, Trevor. I mean, I so, still agree, but I don't, also don't think that Liverpool's just going to blank. Yeah, yeah. You know, like Liverpool 100%. just play a fucking high wire act and, you know, they could score one, they could score four. And uh, yeah, I would not could be surprised. One to four also. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if this was a 4 2 either way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I, absolutely. I completely agree. Both teams to score, just madness kind of game. So I'm sitting here totally. and like, yeah, okay, Trent's maybe a bad shout, you know. But having Mo and Darwin for home men United at Bournemouth, it's like pretty fucking good. And 100% people are using the Man United game because it's easier to say we take them out for Man United rather than have to say I wildcarded out Salah against Bournemouth. Yes, exactly. <laughs> nobody, exactly. nobody wants to say that. And you know what happened when I rage wildcarded in like game week four or something like that and went with yeah. no Liverpool players and then except Mo and then and then Liverpool soon after that played Bournemouth. And do you remember what happened in that game? It was a nine nil. A nine nil. <laughs> nine, nine fucking nil. nil. Everyone that, in the world got like a triple return except Mo. Oh Mo. And that okay, that was just that was horrid. Absolute tragedy. Yeah. That, I had that Diaz, was, I think. I when had Diaz was that? that? Yeah, that was game week four. Nine yeah, nil. Yeah, yeah. Mo blanks. Yeah, Diaz, I think, got a brace and an assist. So Trent Trent had like a yeah, Trent had a 17-pointer. It was just ridiculous. So, oh, man, a lot to think about. I look at my <laughs> team this week, and I'm like, obviously, Nketi is a problem. Hopefully, Stupinian's fit. I don't really know what's going to happen there. But the rest of my team is, like, I feel like pretty, pretty okay. Um, it's pretty okay, mate. Yeah, it's not bad. And then, you know, I'm planning on bringing Tony for Nketi. Probably time to actually finally fuck off Ederson for probably Raya. Yeah. Um, is that is that a good hit to take, <laughs> or is it better to just you can't head out Ed- Ederson this week? He's got to head it. If you're going to stick with it, and I'm like I say, on you, I'm not actually going to try and convince you that go twenty six over twenty seven. And one of the reasons why I'd say that is I think other people as well have to look at what type of manager they are. So. You are a manager that will, you're an ex, the reason we all listen to you is because you guys are brilliant judges of games, brilliant judges of games. That's it, you know, is, is, and so watching this weekend to help you think and make your decision is your normal process for what you would do. And I think you're probably possibly costing yourselves maybe five points of doing it, but I feel you're a good enough judge that you could make those five points up right, by making right, the right. better decisions over those ones. So realistically, if that's your comfort zone, then do that because that yeah, works I for you. you. I, I think, mean, I wonder you know, if there's some people that might even just wildcard in 28. It could be. Because you could wildcard in 28, maybe take a hit in 29, and you're just stacked. Yeah. Right. You you wild card in twenty eight so you don't have, you know, Bruno Rash or something in that team. And then you hit them both yeah. in for twenty nine and you're just so set. The best thing on I think on twenty nine as well is the is the 
the best, best thing about bench boost is, is keepers and it always is for you really, always, always, you always 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 yeah, always always yeah and i look at the 32 one um or I look at the 34 doubles and i think look at the players that are there and stuff and i think i don't even know who i'd have in goal like we don't know that necessarily at newcastle double in 34 well we don't know shit don't, right correct me if i'm wrong shit. Yeah. And whereas I know what's happening in 29. So trying to work yeah. through these keepers and having keepers that are viable, like a Raya, like a Kepa in, yeah. you know, Raya, Sanchez, uh, Kepa, Pope. Yeah. Those guys yeah. are all perfect. Um, what do you think about maybe Navas? Kalar, listen, he's great and he keeps a lot of saves, you know. Like Wolves and Leeds in 29. Sure. Yeah, you're never playing them again in any other game the rest of the season. But Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Sitting on your bench boost, he could be a legend. He could just get a nine save haul. Like, he, that is very in the realm. It's Leeds away. Yeah. You just I see mean, it, they're so it. bad away. But yeah, I can <laughs> absolutely see that. I can absolutely see that. You got Emmy. You've got, yeah, you've got all the keepers that you might want to do. I mean, then you've got Danny Ward, obviously. Right. The legend. <laughs> Ariola, home to Southampton, home to Newcastle. I still am not sure if you're trolling me or not with this entire, you know, 50 minute long podcast. <laughs> I'm really definitely, not sure. You're definitely wild carding before but this week or next week. And I think I think I probably, we come to you're situation. talking me into it a bit. I the the other thing that I think we haven't really talked about that much is you know, was Joe's question on our Discord was just it, it's a part of it, but it's also this is also just past experience. I think coming to 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 like to mind for me is we're wild carding into a team. We think it's a really good team for the rest of the season, and that's just never the case. Like it's there's the case. no one in the world has ever made a wild card team. And just been like, yeah, this is my team for the next 11 game weeks and I'm good to go. And there's going to come a time right now. It's easy to sort of look at 34 and be like, yeah, I don't know who I'm going to want or like, like everything's going to be different. Like there's going to be, you know, for all we know, like Chelsea are flying then and West Ham are flying and Man United fell off and Holland's hurt. And, you know, it's like there's a million more than a million. There's infinite things that could change from here to now. And I think those people who sort of go the traditional route, I guess you would call it, of waiting till later in the season or waiting till you really need your wild card might end up just being like, I'm actually, my team's good and fine right now, so I'm not going to wild card. And later in the season, I'm going to have a team that would take you seven free transfers to get to. And, you know, end the season really strong or something like that would be the other play. But there's there's really no way of knowing, you know, which which one will work out. But that in the past, I feel like saving it is usually better. It, it could do. It could do. If you're yeah. well set, if you've got that. The only, like I said, I'll come back to that bit at the start I said about what type of manager you are. And some of us will do it and our natural great will be, nah, it should be done at this time. It should be yeah. that. It should be yeah. that. Like. Our friend Zoff from the wire, like, like, yeah, Zoff, what are they up to? They're all wild carding, mate. It's just done. Oh, they're all three wild carding, all three wild carding, mate. Oh today, my God. Had, see, this is the had, shit that makes me just feel like, oh, I'm probably just being a fucking idiot and missing. Mate, they've all wild card, they've all just wild carding and said, come, come join us and, and speak to us later to hear me convince you to wild card. They're, they're done, mate. Everyone's done it. Prizes did, did a so no one's even gonna listen to this it. episode. Because everyone's just like, obviously, wild card. Alon's such a fucking moron. No, I see. I don't think so. Because I think we all do have that turmoil inside us and stuff and try and work through. But I think what you all want to do when you everyone's do wild doing card. It. Everyone's like, jumping off the bridge. It's an emotional decision. When it comes into the season, you're going to put something on this decision. You're going to put something on this decision. This, this, And that's one of the things about wild card too, why it's so important is it kind of makes you feel a little bit like what you, how you did that, that there is a lot in it. So therefore yeah. is you, you shouldn't do it and feel you've got to be really comfortable with your decision all the time. But 
be comfortable that you didn't go against it because just your natural inclination is to be right you know anti-establishment you have to check yourself and make sure that the reasons you do or don't want to do it are founded in something other than like your your predetermined biases i totally agree with that absolutely you know i'm going on vacation tonight i'm gonna be out of town (laughs) am i really gonna sit on my laptop you know tomorrow i don't know yes i don't know about that don't know about that don't know about if i want to be in the doghouse all weekend on my little vacation um we sneak a look at a phone we sneak a little look on the discord we do what we do she's like you have to go to the bathroom again Again? i'm like yeah i just you know i got the shits i don't know what to tell you (laughs) yeah we do it we can't help ourselves but it might be right like this is you never know each season to season. I know we think that wild cards don't always work out, but wild card one this season, and I mean like wild card naught, I'm gonna call it, which is game week one this season. Yeah. Th- that first eight, nine game weeks of the season was the most placid game weeks the world's ever seen. We had people burning stuff, we had people yeah, the true. moves were natural. We could have that time again. You never you yeah. don't no on those ones that you know is we all sat and had you know five or six or seven out of ten green arrows in the first week yeah ten weeks and honestly game week 17 post world cup mostly good i would say right like it's not we didn't make teams that were just complete and utter disasters that Mm -hmm. were just like what have i done i need it i need to tear my team to shreds like i've I had a good team. I mostly got green arrows. I'm now sitting on a still good team. And, yeah. you know, the only hits I've taken were for a double. Yeah. So, you know, that there's also that. But they, I, these are big fun. 27, yeah. 29. These are the fun. Oh, God. These are going to set the week up. These this are going to set the season up. This isn't fun way. for me. This is just panic. Just just looking at this table, you see it. You're like, where does my eye get drawn to? Like, if you just showed it, if you just showed it, this is what you need to do when you when you're about to go for the toilet break as tomorrow. Say, so <laughs> if you were just looking at this, what side of the table looks like the important one? Yeah, it's these that's, next three four weeks. I know. Yeah, that's that's big. That's obviously, it. Yeah, bang the button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. just, but 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 bang it and be happy with how you've done it so if it feels better in 27 feels better in 27 it's, it's gonna be fine oh man i don't know if anything's gonna be fine <laughs> you're having a good season mate it's great well it's getting worse and worse every week i'm i'm on mate. the downturn and then followed up by like all of this madness like this might end my season but we'll see all it's right dude end. i mean we've been going back and forth kind of around in circles for like an hour now maybe we should maybe we should wrap this thing up <laughs> Baker, where, you where, can, where can people follow you where can people hear you talk and all that stuff oh yeah yeah so twitter baker fpl 343 um uh every sunday night on uh above average fpl me and adam will go live and do a review of the uh, game week. We might do some extras in the week and stuff. But Sunday nights, eight thirty UK time, um, is we'll just go through the games. Beautiful, do the business. Love it, dude. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for causing me a headache and making me question everything I believe in. It's good times. <laughs> <laughs> Later. See ya.